Fitness function is an integral part of developing strategies. If you're using any software package to develop your strategies or to optimize your strategies, then you need a fitness function to rank those strategies in order for the software to gauge if the strategy is good or bad based on what you told it to do. Now we have many fitness functions that we can use, net profit, compound annual growth rate, return to drawdown ratio, sharp ratio, and really you can build equations and you can go crazy with that. And of course the software will let you do that. So what is the best fitness function you can use to optimize or develop your strategy? Really, this is an important question, and I did this exercise on behalf of you. I tested more than 67,000 strategies to find out what really works and what really doesn't. And you will be surprised at what I found out. So fitness function is not something that you can skip over. In fact, it's available in every optimization. You have to pick something for the software to rank the strategies you are developing based on that number. This is available in all development platforms. For example, here, this is uh, TradeStation. And if I pull the strategy optimization report, you can see that we have score. These are number of strategies here I developed. Uh, I optimize a strategy and we have 105 versions of this strategy. And I can show you, for example, we have expectancy score, TS index, return on account, profit factor, and the list goes on and on. And you can, of course, you can add as many as you like. For example, these are all fitness functions that you can add. And this is strategy quant X. And again, you can see when you are developing, you have to pick something. For example, here we have net profit, return to drawdown our expectancy annual return percent divided by maximum drawdown percent but also you can do weighted fitness which is multiple goals or you can do one goal for example let's say you want to do number of trades number of trades is not here you can give the weight as 100 to a number of trades for example i can give average percent drawdown let's say 40 percent and then compound annual gray growth rate 60 percent so now I have multiple targets, 40% and 60%. So you can see the equation can get really, really complicated very easily. So you have to pick one of these. So then the software will optimize, develop new strategies, and then it will rank all those strategies based on this fitness function that you pick. And being an algo trader, the only way to do this is through testing, of course. So that's what I did. I developed above 67,000 strategies. Now, those strategies were in currencies, futures, indexes, stocks, long, short, or both long and short with stop loss, profit target, without stop loss and profit target, intraday time frame, daily time frame, mere reversion, trend following, fuzzy logic. You name it, I did it. It's really, I spent a whole day doing uh, testing on these strategies. Then I compile all those strategies in a huge uh, database. And then I filter the strategies that uh, produce maybe a thousand dollar profit and lost money. So remember, I sometimes I didn't specify for the strategies to produce profit. I just built strategies. So what I did is I filter the uh, bottom, let's say uh, below one thousand dollar profit. I, it's gone. And then I filter the outliers. So anything above $200,000 profit, I also deleted that. For all the strategies, I use $10,000 as a starting capital. For stocks, I use all capital per one trade. For futures, I only use one contract. For currencies, I only use one lot. So trying to make everything let's say on par between all the strategies. So this is the database. And as you can see, I exported uh, strategy quant x data bank which uh, crashed on me every time i hit 20,000. although sqx had 18 gigabyte of memory on this and uh, 11 cores of cpu so you know java <laughs> so this is the huge data bank it's uh, an export uh, data bank from strategy quant x and as you can see, these are the symbols. 
So I have many symbols, currencies, futures, crypto, and then ETFs. I did 67474. Okay, and then, so this is the profitable strategies and they came to 53,690. And then I capped the strategies to 200K profit and minimum $1,000 profit. And so I reached 30,923 strategies, which is really good. Now, since we are always looking to make money in strategies, so I compared all the metrics to the net profit because at the end of the day, I want to make money. If I rank strategies by highest sharp ratio and then the high sharp ratio is losing money, what's the point? <laughs> There's no point. So we need to compare everything to net profit because we want to make money and we want to rank what is the best metric to make money. Now, granted, drawdown is an important factor in making money. So we will talk about this in a second, but basically now I'm comparing everything to making money, which is net profit. Okay, so this is a kind of scatter plot and the blue graph is the net profit with the annual return uh, percent. The orange line is the linear regression and the R square, it's basically the measure of this slope. So the higher the slope, the more correlated these two metrics are. So here, of course, the annual return should be correlate, highly correlated with net profit because basically it's the same metric, it's uh, returns, but annualized on number of years. This is the return to drawdown ratio versus net profit. Again, we have the net profit on the Y scale, the uh, return to drawdown ratio on the X axis, and the orange line is the linear regression with R square at 0.019. Win loss ratio on the X axis and the R square 0.0027. Annual percent return divided by maximum drawdown percent and R square is 0.0082. Average trade in dollars versus net profit, R square 0.275 average number of bars in trade versus the net profit r square 0.0114 compound annual growth rate versus net profit this is same like annualized uh, net profit a little bit different and we can see again it's highly correlated of course 0.7 now edge ratio was a surprise it's almost zero i don't know if i did anything wrong here but uh, this is three to the power of six that means six zeros and then three <laughs> so it's really small number i would say it's zero okay so there is zero correlation between edge ratio and net profit and then maximum drawdown percent versus net profit what this is saying the r square is low 0.0045 but still the more profit you make the more drawdown you should expect but not the opposite maximum drawdown percent does not lead to higher profit and then our expectancy this is based on van tharp and the our expectancy is actually not correct here i would say because our expectancy needs to know the risk involved in every trade so if you don't have a stop loss then the r cannot be measured then it will be approximated so it's not, I wouldn't say that this is really accurate. Sharp ratio, R square at 0.0447. Stability, stability is a measure of how smooth the equity curve is. And also performance index, also performance index takes the drawdown into the equation. And then winning percent versus net profit. This is uh, really good. I should post this on Twitter because a lot of traders, beginners usually, focus on winning percent. And as you can see that winning percent, it is correlated, but it's not the best metric to pick uh, uh, the best strategy to make money. Okay, so you saw all the charts. Did you had a chance to make up your mind? Well, let me make it easier for you. Okay, so here is the ranking of all those tests. Obviously, these two are highly correlated, but this is what uh, surprising and sharp ratio which takes 
the standard deviation of all the trades from the mean, that's a good measure. Also performance index, which takes the long duration of a drawdown into consideration. Return to drawdown ratio, and then average bars in trade. Really, this is amazing. Average bars in trade, it's a better indication for net profits than win percent by a lot. Perry Kaufman, I've mentioned this many times, he's my virtual mentor, and he always looked at net profit. And that's what I do also, but this is now a proof that net profit is the best metric to find a good strategy. So maybe you can do a weighted index, which is let's say 80% net profit and 20% asset performance. Or you can do net profit all the way. Once you have, let's say 100 strategies, then you sort those on, let's say asset performance index and then you pick the top 10 or the top 20. So did you expect it net profit is the best indication for a good strategy? Let me know in the comments below. I want to know what do you use and what did you expect when I showed you the graphs, which one would be better or worse? As always, if you have any questions, please do so below the video and I'll be more than happy to answer you. I do read and answer all questions sent to the channel. And if you want to take this further and be a part of my inner circle, you are more than welcome to join the Discord server through the link below where I host live question and answer sessions with more than 400 questions already answered in videos and documented so you can easily find the question and the answer. Alongside the tactical asset allocation portfolio signals, strategy code, and much more. As always, good luck with your trading, good luck with your investing, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.